insecurity sucks. Kick it to the curb. Today's story comes with a disclaimer. If you're brave enough, you can stick around. Hello, 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 and I've got a juicy one for you today, but let me let you know what you're listening to. You're listening to the Manifest on Purpose show, and I am your host, Kimberly. It is my passion to inspire you to become the best person that you can be. Thank you so much for showing up, sharing this time and space with me. Thank you for all of those you've invited and thank you for subscribing here and on the website at Kimberly, K-I-M-B-A-L-E-Y. The God in me loves the God in you. Before we get into our story, let's hear our astro numerology forecast for today, courtesy of astro numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn and the Astar 8 mobile numerology app. It is Wednesday, July 31st. The sun is in Leo. The moon is in Gemini. It's a six universal month, a one universal week, a one universal day. The irony of this last day of the month is that this is the best day other than tomorrow to start or do something totally new with your life. For instance, decide what it is you want rather than others want or expect of you instead. Be bold, be decisive, and be determined and not allow anyone to throw you off course. If anything, this will be the last day this month and forever you get a chance to do what's best for you and you alone. Those under the signs of Leo, Aquarius, Aries, as well as those born on the 1st, 4th, 10th, 13th, 19th, 22nd, 28th, and the 31st of the month are the ones likely to step to the plate and make their presence felt. Once again, that is our astro numerology forecast for today and is brought to you by Astro numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn and the Astar 8 mobile numerology app. You can get your personal forecast every day by downloading the app. You can go to Astar 8, A S T A R, the number 8.com. You can also get it on Google Play, the App Store, or by going to Linktree forward slash numbers and you. Today's story is all about being proud of what you do. But the question is, is what you're doing aligned with who you really are? If this is the case, you need to get more aligned with who you are to see what you should really be doing to align with your purpose. You can do that with your numerology report. You can get your astro numerology personal report, your compatibility report, and your yearly forecast. And you can get these reports also for your business. You can also get a personal numerology reading at Kimberly, K-I-M-B-A-L-E-Y dot com to help you determine your purpose and to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Now, Let's get into the direction of our story. I was pretty sure that Betty was the most cantankerous woman I had ever met. The woman had issues. She didn't like many people and I wasn't excluded. We bumped heads all the time when I first began working with her. But through time and a good cup of coffee, all of that changed. I didn't drink coffee back then, but I was always on the coffee making duties because the coffee drinkers swore I made the best coffee in the world. It was all the same to me 
But when I shared a pot of coffee with Betty during our midnight shift, she enjoyed it so much she began to share a story with me. And let me tell you, it wasn't Little Red Riding Hood either. Betty was about 80 and had something she wanted to reveal to me about the days she spent before she got into the medical field. What she told me, I could not believe. She said, I'm a very fortunate woman. People all over this county know and respect me. Whenever I need to get something done, it gets done. As she said that, I thought about Betty. Nobody ever bothered Betty. Ever. She was the law up in there. And she could make the people all the way up to the top move when she wanted them to. Originally, I thought it was because she was so darn mean. But here sat Betty, right in front of me prepared to tell me the secret to her power. So I leaned in a little closer to Betty, not wanting to miss a word. She stated, My husband died early, and I had to do what I had to do to take care of my children. I did it all by myself. She said, I did it by working in the diner right up the road. I thought to myself, so Betty was a waitress before she got into health care. How nice. But Betty wasn't finished. She continued as if she was telepathic and knew exactly what was on my mind. She said, but I was more than just a waitress. I was the manager. I ran the joint. The owner favored me and allowed me to run the diner the way I saw fit to do so. Guess what else Betty told me? She was in charge of the waitresses. She was in charge of the girls. Under Betty's influence, the diner became the diner of the elite in the community. During that time, the elite were primarily men. I heard rumors about those days. Now Betty was confirming that it was all true. Just in case you're sitting on the edge of your seat, the same way I was listening to that story, I'll tell you about these waitresses. Let's just say they were more than just waitresses and serving more than just food. What Betty told me next made my bottom lip hit the floor. Betty was the self-proclaimed madam of the county. According to Betty, she did that for a few decades, and that's what gave her the ability to garner respect from the people in high places in our county. She went into all the details, giving names and sharing experiences. She said I had things on all of them. She concluded her story by saying, There were a lot of people that disagreed or spoke down about what I did, but what I did helped me as a single mother take care of three children. It makes me feel proud that I was able to do that for them. And just like that, Betty's story was done just as quick as it started. What was I to do? I picked my lip off the floor and made me a cup of coffee too. <laughs> Here's a true fact about life. There are no perfect people and there are no people that is here. In this physical existence with us, without a spot or blemish. Now, my disclaimer as Betty said herself, some people may look at Betty's story and think 
the most negative things about what happened. And that's not what this story is about. What this story is really about is not telling you to go out and do things that you feel like is morally wrong or that you know is morally wrong to you. This is just saying, be proud of who you are. Practice self-acceptance and validation. The energy for the weekly wisdom this week was about daring to be different. I picked up something very important from Betty's story. Even though people had a lot to say about Betty, I could tell that Betty had picked up a trait that many people have not even discovered yet. She was able to use self-validation. Self-validation is the feeling of having recognized, confirmed, or establish one's own worthiness or legitimacy. That's the reason why Betty didn't care what others thought about what she said. She knew that whatever she was doing then or in the past, she was still worthy. Are you self-validating? If you're not validating yourself, then that means you're sitting around waiting for someone else to validate you. And you could be waiting forever for that. So don't hold your breath. Here are some things that will let you know if you are practicing self-validation. If you encourage yourself, acknowledge your strengths and efforts, Noticing and accepting your feelings, if you prioritize your needs instead of others, treat yourself with kindness, saying nice things to yourself, accepting your limitations or mistakes. Now, when you listen to some of these things that you could use to validate yourself, these are also some of the things that you should be practicing in your manifestation practice. If you're not at the point of self-validation yet, you should be working towards it. So I'm going to give you a few tips for practicing self-validation. The very first tip that I'm going to share with you is to be present. Stay in the moment. Sometimes we hold on to stuff in the past for so long. Can you imagine how things would have been for Betty if she continued to hold on to what happened all those many years ago in a negative way? I mean, she went on to do great things in the healthcare field. She couldn't have gone on to do that if she was still holding on to or grappling with those things that happened to her in the past. Now, when you are present with yourself, it allows you to become intimate with yourself to determine who you are, what your thoughts are, what are your feelings, and how does that affect your life today? It will also let you know if you're holding on to things that you need to let go of. When you hang on to something too long from the past, it can become depression. And if you're too worried about what's going to happen in the future, it will become anxiety. So focus on right here and right now. My thoughts that help me in this stage is thinking if it's already happened, it can't be changed. So the only thing that you can do is move forward. Another thing you need to do in order to practice self-validation is to stop judging yourself. There are enough people in the world that can point their fingers and judge. You don't need to do it to yourself. Sometimes to be honest, we are too hard on ourselves. We are our own roughest critics. No one can ever love you any more than you should be able to love yourself. I love to go to a good restaurant now and then, but I'm always thinking about the fact that food tastes so much better at home. 
I mean, you know exactly what's in it. You know where it comes from. It's just better when it's from home. There may be people in your life that do love you and that can validate you some, but you have to understand that it's nothing like it coming from home. It's nothing like it coming from within yourself. People can validate you as much as they want to, but you're not going to feel the impact of it like you would when it comes from within, when it comes from the highest source. That's you. So don't be so hard on yourself. I see sometimes when there are people that feel like they did a bad job at something and other people look at them like, wow, that's the most wonderful thing you've ever done. But still, is something missing within them that makes them unable to validate themselves. And self-validation is more important than any validation you can get. This next tip may seem a little familiar with you. However, it's going to have a little twist in it. A lot of times people look back at things that happened in the past to kind of beat themselves up about. Instead of looking back in the past to find things that went wrong, look back in your past to find those times where things went really well for you. And think about those times and what helped you get to that point. People tend to hang on to the things that are most negative. And it seems like it's all bad things that have happened. And it's because those times had so much of an impact. But when you start counting the positive things, then you can get your focus so much off the negative things that happen and focus on the great things that happen and how you were able to achieve those things. It lets you know that your life has not been as bad as what you thought it had. So instead of bringing up those bad things that have happened, start thinking about those experiences that made you happy, those things that made you laugh, those things that brought joy into your life. Last for today, but not least, you are who you are, who you are, who you are. There's no changing you unless you're ready to change accept who you are and learn to appreciate that this is you and your experiences are the things that help you grow, whether they seem positive to you or whether they seem negative to you. Everything we go through has a purpose. Most of the time, these are teaching us how to get up to the next level. So be proud of you and accept you. I haven't heard from Betty in many years, but I think about a lot that she had to be a brave woman to go through the things that she did during the period that she did it in. I'm almost certain that she was not popular amongst the women in the area during the time. But as she said, She was proud that she was able to do what she had to do during the time that she did it. Betty was not being judgmental to herself, and she did not care what other people thought about her. Amongst other things, Betty was practicing self-validation. She had to accept herself before she was accepted by others. Do you practice self-validation? Can you step outside of the box and be who you are without worrying about who says this or who says that? Can you accept yourself as who you are and show up to the world as that? These are some things that are very important. Encouraging yourself. Saying good things about yourself prioritizing yourself. Accept yourself, your blemishes, and don't be too hard on yourself. 
All of these things are key principles that will help you in the manifestation process and it'll help you become a better you because no one can validate you the way that you can. I love you to life. This is how you manifest on purpose.